It's important to talk about the terminology used for knot tying so that we're all on the same page when we start tying these knots. So let's cover just a few. A few terms are, there are two ends to the rope and the end that you're not working on is typically referred to as the standing end. So think of that, if you will, as the coil of your rope, the rope you're not tying the knot in typically. The side that you're working with, that is a hint, is called the working end of the rope. So we'll call this the working end and the side we're not using we'll call the standing end. A couple more terms that are important. When you go around something that's called a turn and when you go around all the way and then some and it's completely encircling that's called a round turn. This is called a loop. Now the thing with a loop is there's two kinds of loops and often when I'm teaching knots and people are getting confused it's because they get confused as to whether it is an overhand loop or an underhand loop. So what that means is an overhand loop, the working end is on top of the standing end, and on an underhand loop, the working end is underneath the standing end. A couple more important terms would be a bite, and a bite is just when you take part of the rope and touch it to another part of the rope. So some of the knots we'll be talking about in a few minutes will include tying knots onto a bite of rope. A bend is simply joining two ropes, so when you talk about different kinds of bends, a sheet bend is attaching two ropes using a bend. And the other term that we'll use sometimes is tail. Sometimes in rescue it's referred to as a tag, but I like the word tail. It's pretty obvious what that is. It's the amount of rope that is left over when you finish your knot, and typically knots are more secure when there's more tail although it can become excessive. If you've got 20 feet of tail, it gets in the way and can be quite cumbersome.